Technology is not always a good idea in class, right? I told you earlier in the lesson of uh, computers and happiness, it says happiness comes when you meet a person, not when you meet a technology, right? And we have this thing. This technology makes me unhappy because it malfunctions, right? Okay, here we go. <coughs> so we, we had a problem, right? And we were talking about our curriculum quickly, I reviewed. Now about evaluation, you have 50% internal evaluation and 50% external evaluation. For internal evaluation, you will make presentations, you will submit written assignments, you will write in journals, portfolios, test, viva, voce, etc. For external, you will have final examination. You will get multiple choice questions, 10 questions, one question, one mark per question, 10 mark, 10 minute. Then you have seven short answer questions. You will answer any six, uh, four marks per question, 24 marks. And you have three long questions, and you will answer any two of them, eight marks per question, 16. So 16 plus 24, 40 plus 10, 50. That's final. And 50, internal. Okay, now let's move the lesson now. Okay, how many of you, I had mailed you the text uh, uh, where do we stand in the group mail. Did you get the text? I had mailed a soft copy of the text in a group mail, BBA A 2023 at the rate uh, lacm.edu.np. You didn't check the mail, I guess. I don't know, you didn't check. So raise your hand if you were able to read the essay at home. Okay, two people have read, three people have read. Okay. So let's talk about how we read because we are just beginning reading, right? So first of all, whenever you start reading a text, what you can do is look for the context in which the text occurs. Or you can also use the word situation in which the text occurs. For example, the essay, Where Do We Stand, is the second core reading in chapter one titled intercultural communication. So the first thing is you should make sure that you understand the meaning of the key words in this title. You have intercultural communication. So what does intercultural mean? Among many cultures, let's say. What does communication mean? Communication might mean exchange of ideas, or information, for example. And communication can be verbal. And it can also be non-verbal. And when you talk about non-verbal communication, it can be through facial expression you are talking to somebody and they pucker their face and you know they don't like you. Right? You get the message. Facial expression, non-verbal communication can be through body language. It can also be through uh, gesture and posture. Right? 
and it can also be true use of space eye contact as you said non verbal communication can also be through how people use time or what attitude okay there are many so the essay that we are going to start with the essay is about non verbal communication right and particularly this essay is about use of space so the essay so we we talked about the two words right intercultural communication so now let's write how do people from different cultures use space while having conversation in public this is the topic of this essay so this essay answers this question this essay answers this question we said we need to focus on the context so the context of this text is intercultural communication and if you see the picture you will have a better idea about the, the theme you can see a fair skinned lady and a lady of color and you can easily guess that the two ladies probably belong to two different cultures one may be let's say european culture another may be let's say african culture right and if you go below the picture you will see very important information always read this information before you go to the essay let's read in this chapter you will explore cultural different let's note down it says in this chapter you will explore what cultural differences in values beliefs and behaviors then it will also present intercultural problems that sometimes result from these differences ओहो ये बीच में नले ये कौन सा सॉइल होता है एकदम डिस्ट्रैक्शन होने चाहिए ले। There is ईस and constitution day, so there won't be regular classes on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Look, you gave. you you gave a very good insight about education look you were not so happy when i was teaching but the moment you learned about three day holiday you were so happy right this shows clearly that that schools and colleges are not able to make you happy while teaching and learning right this is a bitter reality right i wish my class was so interesting 
that you love to come my class even on holiday, right? I don't know how to do that. Okay, there are, inter uh, there are differences and there are problems resulting from these differences. Then it says, you will consider how people from diverse cultures regard time. Okay. How people... Let's write down. From diverse culture regard time express themselves verbally express themselves non-verbally and interact successfully. Every time you read an essay from this book, it's always a good idea to first focus on the chapter title, have a look on the picture, then read carefully the opening comment because it beautifully summarizes the theme of the chapter. Now you have clear understanding about the context in which the essay is occurring, right? Now, so mainly the essay we are going to read will focus on uh, non-verbal communication, right? As I said earlier. And it will particularly focus on uh, use of space in public conversation. And as it says, when people have different values about space use, when there are differences in how an American maintains a distance and how an Arabian likes to come very close, such differences might result in problems and might result in uh, frustration. It may, feel the, it may make the American feel bullied and it may make the Arabian feel that the Americans are cold, they don't like to come close to you. Right? And then she also tells how we can solve these problems. She says that if you have a good understanding of the culture of your counterpart, then you will understand why they are behaving that way. And you won't be frustrated when you have an interaction with them in a multicultural setting. So that is the context of our reading. Okay, now... At home, I won't spend time in class, but I'll encourage that at home you can answer these questions yourself. I won't spend time in class from them. So, the first essay is not in our, your course this time, American Values and Assumptions. But if you have time and interest, read. It is informative. Now, we'll move to the second essay. Yeah. You can read. It is independently, it's not in your course. It's not in your course. And I know when something is not in your course, you will never bother reading it, right? Because you have been trained to read only course. Like the horses with the, what do you call? Right, course. Okay. Now, let me erase. Okay, let's write the heading. Go. We 
we can't prevent you from going to washroom. It's a natural thing. So, but I wish you could stay throughout the class at least and you went out when the class ends, right? Okay. So we have the title, Where Do We Stand? The first thing as you start reading is try to understand the mode of writing. If you check the syllabus, the first unit, if you check the syllabus, you will see in first unit, for example, it says argumentative, narrative, narrative, reflective. First unit presents argumentative writing. So this essay is an argumentative essay. Before you read, you should have this thing in mind that the essay is an argumentative essay. If you know that this essay is an argumentative essay, and if you understand what is an argument essay, you will be better able to read the essay. Right. Now, what is an argumentative writing? In an argumentative writing, a writer makes an argument. An argument might do two or three things. For example, there may be a problem. A writer picks up a problem, social problem, academic problem, personal problem. Then the writer discusses the nature of the problem. The writer explains the nature of the problem. Then the writer might talk about the cause of the problem. What is causing the problem? And finally, the writer may propose or recommend solution to the problem. So if an argumentative essay presents a problem, discusses the nature of the problem, defines the problem, then explores the causes of the problem, and finally proposes a possible solution to the problem, we call this problem solution essay. We call this problem solution essay. What do we call it? Problem solution essay. Another possibility in an argumentative essay is uh, Position is, let's say. In position essays, in position essay, let's let me give you an example. Okay, there is a topic abortion, let's say. Abortion is a topic. Now, abortion, as you will realize, is a controversial topic. It is a controversial topic topic. Or you can say the issue of single mother. Let's pick up. Or even more problematic topic can be sex before marriage, for example. These are more controversial topics, right? But they are current. 
people are talking these things. You have a topic. Now when you have, when you have such topics, they might become an issue. When does a topic become an issue? Something becomes an issue when people have divided opinion about it. When 100% people have one opinion, it's not an issue. If everyone agrees to a point, there is no issue. Issue appears when one party agrees and the other party disagrees. Last time, there was a huge debate about uh, beef in Nepal, right? Beef, eating the meat of cows. And you saw on social media how some people, uh, 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 according to the media reports, uh, uh, butchered, a cow, uh, butchered uh, an ox and celebrated eating the meat of the ox publicly and uh, as the media says uploaded the video and you saw how this became a very controversial issue in Nepal right some people said we must not slaughter cows others said it's our cultural right to eat beef that became an issue. So what is an issue? Where people have divided opinion, that becomes an issue. Now, let's take abortion. And one party can say, abortion should be made legal. Abortion should be made legal. Then somebody can say, no, you can't make abortion legal. Abortion must be illegal. So do you see, there are two positions. And these are opposite positions, right? And when you come up with two opposing positions, it becomes the issue. The topic becomes an issue. Now, in a position essay, you take one position. Suppose you go with that idea that abortion should be legal. And you begin your essay by saying abortion should be legal. And then you write five, six paragraphs giving examples why it should be legal. You give your reasons, right? Your own reasons. Now somebody who disagrees with you might begin by saying that abortion should be illegal and give reasons so if you take if you take sides in a debate if you take sides for or against in a debate you can say you are writing a position paper what do you call it position paper in future particularly when you go for higher education right at the university doing master's phd your professor might ask you to write a position paper. Don't be confused. A position paper is where you take a stand on an issue that is in debate and you support your stand with your own reasons and evidences. Right? And you try to convince people. Now, this is second kind of argument. Position paper, right? Or position essay. The third is... <coughs> You can also write an argument to persuade people about something. Suppose you are an activist and you are not happy with the way people are indiscriminately using plastic bags. You are not happy. And you, you feel that plastic bags are posing very serious threat to the environment, right? People throw plastic in the rivers and it ends up in the ocean, killing species. So what do you do? You start to write an essay where you bring evidence how plastic is harmful. You describe the impact plastic has on the environment. 
and you invite people, you call people to avoid using plastic. And if I read your essay and I am persuaded and I start using plastic less and less, then your essay has succeeded in persuading me. I taught an essay long uh, for many years. That is my behavior. The essay that I taught is two long-term problems, too few trees, and too many people. This is an essay written by Professor Moti Nisani. It was in previous grade 12 course. And in this essay, Moti Nisani discusses how increasing population brings environmental crisis. And after teaching this essay for many years, one change came to me. I, start, I started avoiding plastic. So teaching that essay persuaded me to change my behavior. In persuasive essay, either you change people's opinion about something, or you persuade people to take some action. You persuade people to take some action. So I explained to you three modes of argumentative writing. The problem solution argument, the position paper argument, the persuasive argument. A common term is we say a reasoning a case or we also say arguing a case. When you say you want to argue a case, you mean you have a claim. We must not smoke. And you give reasons why we must not smoke. So arguing a case or reasoning a case means coming up with a claim and then supporting your claim with reasons. Okay. Is this clear to you? Any questions before I move ahead? Okay, let me erase. What is the time? We have a few minutes more. Uh, this class is heavily teacher-centered and uh, uh, I hope you can bear it. But I know it's difficult to listen to teachers a long time early morning. But I wanted to uh, present my ideas before I invite you to present. <coughs> okay, now what I'm going to do is we will read the essay, the one in our course. And as we read the essay, we will understand components of an argument. Okay, so let's read first, then we'll talk about it. Always, when you read, there are instructions in a book, follow them. For example, taking notes while you read. If you are reading at home, always have a pen or pencil or highlighter and note down as you read important ideas. It says, as you read the article, underline or highlight. Look how we read. As we read, we underline. As we read, we highlight. The passages describing the non-verbal behavior of various cultures. What to highlight? Non-verbal behavior of various cultures. Then in the margin next to each marked passage indicate whether the behavior is commonly seen in your culture. Indicate whether that behavior is seen in your culture. So what is happening? You underline, you highlight, and you write in the margin. You comment in the margin. Such reading is known as active reading. What do we call it? What is active reading? 
reading in which you underline you circle you highlight and you write comments in the margin if you write comments as you read if you write comments as you read you call this as what do we call it annotated reading for example i ha i have it i guess look here here is example somebody has done this book was given to me by one of my students so here the student has written something with the pencil in the margin now this is annotation what is annotation writing commentaries at the margin as you read it may have a question it may have something they are confused about or anything right okay let's move ahead we have the title where do we stand where do we stand pay attention to the title of the essay it begins with where that means it will be about place right we stand so normally do you stand in the bedroom no not even in the kitchen not even in the living room most probably you stand often outside home in public spaces right now your teacher is standing here and where is your teacher standing your teacher is standing at the front of the class this is my space this is my space right then before you start reading the essay there is short information about the author and the the essay read it in the following article lisa davis a freelance writer in the united states focuses on cultural differences in the use of personal space note it down so this essay is about cultural differences in the use of personal space this is the theme of the essay one type of non verbal communication and on problems arising from these differences okay problems arising from these so two things one the essay will present cultural differences in how people use this space second problems that result from this differ have you seen whenever there are differences problems appear right in nepal recently there were differences of opinion about beef and there were problems right there were demonstrations by people right there was i guess what do you call it? was there a curfew i don't i don't think curfew no where do we stand was originally published in the magazine in health in 1990 i was talking about context so where was this essay published this essay was published in a magazine we call this a container container means the place where an article is published so it was published in a magazine now the moment you know that the text was published in a magazine who reads magazine so magazines are magazines prescribed in college curriculum did you have any magazine in grade 11 and 12 in your course did you have any magazine prescribed in your curriculum grade 11 and 12 probably you didn't magazines are not part of formal academic setting magazines are part of informal setting you read magazines at home you read magazines at the bus stand you read magazines at the railway station you read magazines in private time 
You read magazines outside classroom. Nari, a magazine you might read at home. What are, can you name some magazines in Nepal? Name some Nepalese magazines. One is Nari. Other? Hmm? Nari and Himalayan Time. Is that a magazine? That's a newspaper. Okay, know the difference between a magazine and a newspaper. Okay. And what magazine is it published? In health. When was it published? 1990. Context. This article was published in a magazine named In Health in 1990. And it has a theme of cultural differences in the use of problem, personal space, and problems arising from them. Before you read, you must know these things. This is called, let's say, in a sense, pre-reading. Pre-reading. Now, we will stop here. At home, go through the essay, okay? And in next class, we will read it slowly. We will read this essay quite slowly because we are just starting. And I will spend some time making you understand what is argument and how to read. Thank you. Any questions you want to ask me? Thank you.